Hello and welcome to yet another video. So I've got the uh, lithium ion battery pack from the Nissan Leaf back in its little cubby hole. I've got, uh, it's in backwards now, uh, before I had the connector on this side, now it's on the other side. And I've got the uh, DMOC adapter wired back up. It's connected to the uh, interface there and I made some extensions and so now I can control it from up here. Um, I put it in backwards because I this gives me access to the uh, BMS, which is on the side here. And I took that down to the basement, if you watched the previous video, and took it apart and found where the transmit and receive lines are. And I'm hooked up my scope to the transmit, receive, and ground. Uh, let me see if I can get in here. So I've got a little cable here, if it'll focus. And... It's, I snuck it out through this uh, where the CAN communications connector is. So there's a little bit of a gap there and was able to get that in there. So what this means is I've got my uh, uh, program here running again and I've got the scope hooked up and I'll go ahead and turn this on. So if I send it the command to turn on, you hear some clicking. We're now getting data from it, and you can see it's um, you know, updating all the cell voltages. Interestingly enough, uh, it's warmed up in the garage. It is currently, what, 55 degrees now, and now it shows I have seven bars instead of six like it was showing before, even though the voltages didn't change. So I think it that the bars might be just temperature controlled. I'm not sure. Because I haven't been discharging it. But anyways, this is the cool stuff. So, let me turn down the brightness here because it's blooming on the phone. I am looking at the, uh, so the top line should be the transmit. And the bottom line is, the bottom trace is receive. And it looks like it's putting out an address. And it responds with an address. And then it just clocks like F's all the way through and then this looks like this is the data from each of the little each uh, balancing chip and then there's a shorter pulse every once in a while so something else is getting queried not sure um, maybe that's it actually writing out which shunts should be turned on and off that would be awesome or which uh, current uh, the little um, balancing resistor should be on or off that would be pretty impressive then be able to decode that pretty easily uh, unfortunately, I don't have a digital capture scope. This is the best scope I have. It's my old uh, Tektronix 475. Not the world's greatest, but it gets the job done. Uh, so I might have to borrow a better scope from work and see what I can do with that. But um, it definitely looks like there's address and data. Um, if I put this one on top, you can see the, uh, the addresses look like they line up. It looks like it's just delayed by one clock as it goes through. So that should be scanning through, uh, what is there, like 24 chips on there? So there should be like 24 different addresses, I would assume. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, it is five volts. I was surprised that their micro is running at five volts instead of 3.3 or 2.5. My uh, DMOC adapter runs at 3.3 volts. However, it does have five volt tolerant IO so I believe I should be able to receive both of these channels and then see what's being sent and, and then I can actually um, add some more to my program here and add another section down here saying this is what I think is coming over the serial bus. So I think it doesn't look too bad. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to uh, investigate further, but I think uh, I'm done for tonight. Um, go ahead and shut all this down and uh, think about that. But uh, I'm starting to put together a, putting together a plan for what I'm going to do for the, um, in order to split this up and make it work in my truck. But anyways, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.